All right, so let's look at just some of these examples of like kind of what you can expect when you're working on these, if you work on them on Alex, all right? Um, so we've got over here, I apologize if this, this screen's a little small, but I wanted to be able to have somewhere to work so I could show you the work I'm doing while we do it. it says solve for x, and we've got two equations that are both set up equal to y. So they're in slope intercept form, even though um, they may not look like it. It's just like this first one doesn't have a plus b going on, and the second one, y equals 40, is, uh, is just telling you a quantity. So what we do is you, if you've got y equals 4x and you've got y equals 40, you can take either one of these and substitute it in for y. So I can take that 4x and substitute it in for this y over here. Okay, so let's do that. So that would give us 4x equals 40. And then you just solve the equation. It's just a one-step algebra equation. You look at what's being done to the x. Well, the x is being multiplied by 4. So we are going to solve this by dividing both sides by 4. You do the opposite, right? Set up our little fence. And then this will turn into 1, which is what we want coefficient of 1 in front of that x and then and then simplify this over here and you get x is equal to 10 and remember when you're doing when you're solving a system of equations finding x isn't enough now we need to take the x and we need to put it in and see what we get for y the nice thing about this equation is that they actually tell us what y is it's the it's the second the second equation this one right here they say y equals 40 so your point, right, that satisfies both of these is going to be the point 10, 40. Okay? Because if I put 10 in for x in that first equation, 4 times 10 equals 40. All right? And then you have your solution. So it says, in this one it says solve for x, so all we got to do is just put in our x. So we'll put 10 and then check. <clears throat> Excellent. Let's look at two more examples. All right, I'm going to take this and clean this up a little bit real quick. All right, so let's solve the system of equations. You've got y equals 9x and then y equals 5x plus 24. So let's, uh, I'm going to write these down. y equals 9x and then y equals 5x plus 24. So again, it doesn't matter which one you take. If they're both solved for y, all you have to do is just take one of them and substitute it in for y in the other equation. So I have y equals 9x. So if this is equal to 9x, that means that this y is also equal to 9x. So we're going to put that in. And you get 9x is equal to 5x plus 24. So we have a two-step equation here. Um, I always joke around and say cows and chickens, but basically what that means is get your x's on one side, get your numbers on the other. So we've got more of the x on the left side over here. So let's move this 5x over. And we're going to move that by subtracting 5x from both sides. All right. That gets rid of it over here and gives you 24. And then 9 minus 5 gives you 4x, right? 9x minus 5x. And then 4x equals 24. That means I divide both sides by 4 to get x by itself with a coefficient of 1. 24 divided by 4 is 6. And this one, it wants us to solve the system, so we're going to need a value for x and a value for y. So once I find this value for x, it doesn't matter which equation you put it in, but just put it in one of those and see what you get for a solution. So let's use that top equation where you get y equals 9x. And we're going to substitute 6 in for x. A lot of substituting in these, right? 9 times 6. And then 9 times 6 is 54. All right? So the, the solution would be the point 6, 54. But they want us to put it in over here separately. So we'll put 6 in there. And then we'll put in 54 right there. Let's check check over here make sure we're all good and then click check and we're doing good all right let's look at one more all right 
Now in this, this example, I purposely picked one where we had to put this into um, a standard form equation, all right? So make it a little, little more rigorous, a little harder, all right? So let me, let me kind of wipe, wipe this side of the screen down a little bit here so we've got some room to work. It's not super messy. All right, so, well, I don't know why I did that. That was weird. All right, so we've got negative 3x plus 5y equals negative 20. And then we've got y is equal to 2x minus 11. Well, I hope you recognize with these that when you have one of the equations already solved for y, that's the equation that you are going to substitute into the other one. All right, so if this is telling me y is equal to something, then we're going to take that and we're going to take this something right here, this 2x minus 11, and we're going to put it in place for y in there. So you're going to get negative 3x plus, and this is where you got to be careful, you're going to use your distributive property, 5 times this whole quantity that they're saying y equals in the second equation, which is 2x minus 11, and then that whole thing equals negative 20. All right, maybe I can move this over a little bit. All right, now in my next equation, let's crack open this uh, distributive property. All right, so you get 3x, 5 times 2x gives me 10x. I'm sorry, I should have said negative 3x. And 5 times negative 11 gives me negative 55, and then that equals negative 20. So I want to combine my x terms and I want to get my numbers all on the same side of the equation. So I think it would make the most sense. Let's combine our x terms first, all right? So negative 3x plus 10x gives me 7x minus 55. I'm just going through this slowly. And then let's move this negative 55 over to the other side by adding it to both sides. So plus 55, and then that gives me 35 over here. I don't know what that is. Sometimes this thing just does weird stuff, and I don't know why. You get 7x equals 35. All right, next, let's get x by itself, and I'm going to do that by dividing both sides by 7, and then you get x is equal to 5. So we figured out what x is. So the next step is take x and put it into one of the equations and solve for y. It's almost always easiest to put this into one that's in slope-intercept form when you find x first. So you get y is equal to 2 times, and let's substitute in our 5, 5, and I'm using this equation right here, minus 11. So you get y is equal to 10 minus 11, which is negative 1. So we have the point 5, negative 1. Let's put this point now into this top equation up here and see if it works. Well, 3 times negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Right? I'm going to write this actually in a different color. I'm going to go negative 15. And then 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. Right? Sorry, I don't need to deal with that right now. Negative 5. Now, negative 15 plus negative 5 gives me negative 20, and you can see that that is equal to what they're telling us it equals. So our answer looks good. So our x is 5. We'll put that in. And then our y value is negative 1. Negative 1. All right. So check. I wonder if you hear my daughter throwing a fit about sandals right now. Um, we did it. So thanks for sticking on sticking through this um just remember to check go back and check your work before you click your answers because that's just a good practice to be in and hopefully this is making some sense to you